Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we are fixing the brakes on the van. So the last couple of days they've started to squeal and this can be caused by a number of things. It can be the pads are worn, can, pads could be glazed, the discs could be glazed, could be a build up of dust. So we're going to go in, have a good look, see what's going on and see how we can fix it. You need to remember to open the top of this. This is your reservoir for your brake fluid. Because we're going to push the pistons back, that's going to force um, brake fluid back up into here. So we will need to keep a close eye on that and take some out when required. I'll just set that on there so no dust drops in. Rather than mess about this week, we're gonna we're actually gonna put new pads in, new slider kit, and new vibration shims. Anti-vibration shims they are. So the general condition of the discs isn't too bad. Um, we put these on actually four years ago, and we're still on the same set of pads. So I did look at changing the discs. There's not a lot wrong with them, so what we're going to do is we're just going to dress, dress them up with the flapper disc. We're going to take that lip off there. There's no lip on the inside, so we'll dress that up. We'll take some of that glaze off the surface because that's like a mirror. We'll change the pads out. We'll clean all this debris up off here and dust um, because this is one of the main things. Dust builds up. It gets into all the little bits. Um, these anti-vibration shims they wear they get become weak and they start to just vibrate and squeal so it doesn't look too bad we'll give everything a real good clean off and then we'll get stuck in so one of the first jobs we're going to do is we're going to pull the disc away from the pads pushing the pistons back into where they should be and that way we should be able to the pads a little bit easier when we need to. That allows the disc to spin without any restriction on it. Right, let's let's take these covers off. So the sliders. On crafters and sprinters, they fail quite a lot. Um, for me, if you feel any problems with your brakes, like vibrating or through the steering wheel, this will be the first place to check. In all honesty, if this doesn't move back and forwards like that, you've got a problem. If you do get vibration, if that moves fine like that, and then you get vibration, look at your discs next. Because if it's not that, it'll be that. <laughs> so, 6mm Allen head undoes the pins that hold the sliders in. Well, they're Allen bolts, they're not pins. There's one. Again, we're going to dispose of that because the new slider kit comes with them fitted. So, we are nearly at a point where we can take that apart. So I just give that a little whack and that breaks the corrosion in them two parts because it will have got a hole there. Take that off and hang that up out the way. Now we can get a look at the pads for the first time. Now there's a lot of, there is a lot of meat on there, but look at that. If you can see that, there's rust on there. So what we'll have a look at is how that is performing. That one's quite glazed as well. So I think we've had some rust on the back of there. We'll have a little look at that. I think, I think they've lost their spring as well. That one's broken so we are missing a part off that one so good job we've bought new ones we're just having a look what things are like here there's a little bit of 
corrosion on there, a bit of, bit of build up of gunk and grime. So we're going to take time and we're going to clean this carriage up. So what I'll probably do is I'll take this off the van now and we'll have a better look at it. To remove the brake pad carriage, we just do undo these 21 mil bolts, um, crack them off with a with a long pry bar first. Um, that will help you because they usually do seize in place. Right, that's the brake pad carriage off, and it is pretty grimy. Um, it wants a bit of work done on it, so we'll crack on. We'll get that cleaned up. Um, these bits in particular. Over the years they've got hot, um, show you there, they've got hot, the anti-vibration paste and, and uh, copper slip has got hot and ran and just muckied, caught all the dust and made it all <laughs> shitty. <laughs> so it wants a good clean up, so we'll do that now. Right, that will do that. A little bit cleaner. You see, we'll uh, we'll carry on and give the rest of this a good a good cleaning up because there's quite a bit of debris on there. I'll just end up tapping it off with a hammer and kicking it away. See it there coming away. Right, I'll crack on and do that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the disc and we're going to have a give that a good clean up and deburr. So take this little torque bit out of here and hopefully this comes off. Now four years ago when we tried to take this off we literally smashed it off with well the old ones we smashed off with a sledgehammer because they were seized solid. Now we did put a lot of uh, copper slip behind this so hopefully this just falls off. Hopefully. Well that's a little torque grub screw out. That came out easy enough. Let's uh, just see Ah, it's moved. Right, that's it. Whew. Okay. That's the back of the disc. Um, these bits here is what will stop on us. So we'll give all this a, a good dress up and a tidy up and a clean off and then we'll go from there. If you've not seen one of these before, it's a flapper disc. It's made up of multiple layers of uh, abrasive paper on a disc and it it can be as hard or as gentle as you want it to be so just a few pi loads of pressure in one place it'll act like a grinder if you just want to dust off and clean up and just put gentle pressure on it'll do that as well again we'll give all the surfaces a good clean off Good thing to do is run your hand over. If there's any high areas like there, just again give it a light clean and dust. There you go, that's nice and cleaned up again. And before we put that back together, we will give that a coating of uh, copper slip. There you go. We'll just pop that on, and that just allows us to take things off in the future if we need to. I had contemplated saving this disc because really on the front there's only just a tiny little lip there's very little on the front there we could have easily dressed that off and, and got rid of some of this glaze as well by just using the flapper disc on it um, but now that I've had a look at it in a bit more detail that, that's not too bad either They're maybe one's a little bit thicker than the other but when I've started looking at the back I got the flapper disc on there and started dressing it and this is just knackered absolutely knackered so we won't be putting that back on setting new discs so i always change things in pairs if i was to change anything on the brakes i would always go out and I'd buy two of them so rather than just put one disc on i'm going to put both discs on same with pads same with sliders it's the right thing to do it's going to give you a balanced braking system to be honest if you go fixing one putting all new parts on one side and try and get away cut corners and not do anything with the other side you're going to struggle um it's just going to come back 
and haunt you later. So I always recommend change everything in pairs. And then that way, you're not going to go wrong. You're not going to find yourself stuck. So we are um, in a bit of dilemma because it's a Saturday afternoon. Uh, I can't get a disc till Monday. So I will do what I can now. We'll carry on and then we'll just fit new discs on Monday evening. There's still a couple of jobs we can do. Um, and one of them is, is to get these sliders out. So basically just pull and twist like that. Same on the bottom. Get it out the rubber. Pull it right through the rubber. That's the top one. And the bottom one has like a, a rubber guide on it. And I think that just stops it from vibrating up and down. Um, grab these rubbers, just rip them out. And that is it. We're going to put all new stuff in there, but before we do that, let's just have a little feel inside, see what everything's like. That's quite good in there. And so is that one. Now you are going to get dirty hands doing that, but it is what it is. So, good clean in there. Same at the bottom. Let that evaporate. Well, we'll grease it back up before we put it all back together. So we've cleaned all this out. We've got a good blowout with the uh, brake cleaner. So these little seals actually sit inside. So once you get it located, I'll just give it a little turn. Make sure it's seated properly. Same with this one. I'll pop that one in. There's a little channel in there, and when these get blocked up with crap, this is where I think all the problems start. So let's pop that back in there. And then give it a little twist so it seats properly. There you go. I think we're good there. So we're putting a little bit of grease on there. Yep, yeah, all the way up. Make sure it's all covered. Nice the thin layer of it. And we just need to pop that in. And once it's through, we just need to push work this little seal over, this little gator. And then it sits in a little recess. So once it's in the recess, you're done. That's that bit. A little bit harder with this one because we've got this rubber. So again, get plenty of grease on it. Give it a good lather in. Up and down, nice thin covering. All the way around it. That's a little recess there that this gator here, the end of that gator, will sit in. Then come to the back, pop it in. So you'll meet a little bit of resistance when you're popping that in. And that's because you've got a rubber here. This part of the gator is also sat in. So you've got to get it past over that gator without damaging it. And that rubber seal at the back in. But once it's in, just push it to the front and again work this gator over the top. Easier said than done when you've got grease all over your hands. <laughs> oh my god, did you see that? I nearly had it. There you go. Oh. <laughs> right, let's go at it. Go, go, go. Right, we're, we're over. Oh my God, did you see that? I had it, I had it. Right, we're on. Let's push it through a little bit further. Right, that's it dropped into the recess. So, as you can see there, it's moving freely. Happy with that. We've been and got the uh, new discs. And, uh, God, they look shiny. Now, one thing I noticed straight away is how much wear actually 
occurred on that disc. If you look this side here, there's this side hasn't wore as much as this side. So, but anyway, we know this has been the cause of all our problems and this is what we need to change. Obviously this disc has not been, this side of the brake has not been working properly for a long, long time. And that's where the noise has been coming from. If you look, it's probably, that's probably heat damage as well there. So, nice new one to go on. Um, new screw there as well. So what we're going to do first of all is get rid of this protective coating. As it has got a bit of a thing on there. Right, we'll get that sanded off and uh, well, we'll give it a rub up anyway. I'm sure as soon as I apply the brakes it'll clean it all off. But we'll give it a do with the brake cleaner and then a bit of an agitator. It's got some 80 grit wet and dry, we've got some Mintex brake cleaner just to give everything a good clean up. There you go, doesn't take a lot. Just going to rinse off. So just a quick recap what we did the other day, we stripped everything out, we've, we've cleaned everything up, um, paying particular attention to this because this part of the hub will, over the years, corrode and gather dust and shit and all the rest of it in there and jam that on. So to give yourself a fighting chance when you come to take everything back off in the future, just make sure we're that you've coated it all with some copper slip and then that way you've got the best chance to get this back off if you need it off in the future doesn't need a lot just a thin layer and then we need to get this in position got our new Lock and tab there, lock and bolt, slip it on, line everything up. And just tighten this one back up. Then to the cradle, again we cleaned all this off the other day, just quickly bolt that back into place. Remember which way. <laughs> That's a big 21 nuts on the back. Again, we've copper slipped that in case we need it in the future. Right, that's on. Just make sure everything's free of moving, and it is. There should be about a millimeter gap both sides. That's perfect. Let me show you that. So, right in there. Millimeter gap between the rotor that side and that side. Remember, these are all new parts that we're putting on here today because you know this van's eight year old now, so it's a little treat. So, new rattle shims, so they're just basically they're sitting in there. And if you remember, paid particular attention to cleaning that up. And the shoes will sit in that, top and bottom. But before we do that, let's just put a bit of copper slip on all the bits that are going to make contact with metal. And again, that'll stop it squealing and squeaking and all that good stuff. If you remember, we only had half of one of these. <laughs> when I took it apart so we've got our money's worth out the last lot so basically wherever we make contact we will contact with metal we will stick a little bit of this on that cup slip just to 
And now time to put the pads in. Now, before I put the pads in, I'll give them a bit of a rub. Give them a little bit of a clean up. Checking these chemicals off that might be sat on the face. Any all the resins that have come to light during production. I thought I had it in the bottom. Why isn't that going in anyway? Just being awkward, that's all. Nope. It doesn't want to play ball. Right. That keeps jumping up. So what I'll do is I'll try again. <laughs> Stop being a silly bugger. There you go, we're in, we're in. Top and bottom locked in. Back pad. Again. Just put that in the exact same way. There you go. And just put a little gap in between that. Make sure everything's moving freely. That's the pads in, we're in the catering position. Now, just peel them back a little ways and rotate, rotate the disc again. What we're looking for is to make sure that these anti-vibration shims, anti-rattle shims aren't touching. So, happy with that. Everything's moving freely. Time to put the caliper on. Now, remember we did the sliders um, previously. Um, now, how am I doing this? That's it, that's the way it goes. Now, this might be tight. <laughs> you just need to force that back. That's it. You see what I did there? I leaned. The caliper on the disc and I push the piston back just a little bit further because it's creeped. Right, what we need to do is just force that through there. That's why I said it's on the outside one. Now before we button all this up, these three points here make contact with the pads. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of copper slip on there as well just there there and there and the last place is just where the sliders are going to sit because you never know we may, may need to be back in there at a later date again last new part pull the covers off we will just slide that into there Line that up. With our six mil Allen head, we're going to start to tighten that up as well. What you start to see there now is the is the slider pulling through, and that rubber should just sit back out the way. No need to over tighten things. Just a little nip. There you go, that's it back together, apart from one thing. Now, this is the bit that's usually lots of fun. Doesn't want to play ball. But, uh, I can't remember how I got in this time. Hold that there. Just slid in nicely. That's it. Make sure everything's tucked in. That noise is just the pads touching. Since we've got the colour in place. Right, covers on. That's us finished on this side. So I'll crack on. I'll get the other side done. 
and then we'll take it for a test run. Right, let's make a start. So, where do we start? Near the top. One. That'll go to the opposing one. Two. The locker nut. That's us, six. So, what I do is 50 miles and then I'll check it again. And usually I don't have any problems after that. Well, I've had, never had a problem. Always talk them up and then check them again after 50 miles. Before we go anywhere, we're going to pump that brake pedal. Obviously, we've forced the caliper apart on both sides. So, we now need to take up that gap. Um, I've seen. Two, Way too many people not do that and end up driving through garage doors, garage walls, garden walls. It happens. So before you move off, get that pedal firm, good few pumps. And when you're happy and confident, time to move off. So that's the front brake sorted. We've been out for a couple hours, had a good ride around in it. Everything is performing as it should do. A little bit better braking on the front, but I've noticed the backs now need sorting as well. So that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments or any questions, just uh, drop them in the bottom there in the comment section and we'll try and get back to them and answer them as quickly as possible. Just take a little bit of time sometimes, depending on what we're doing and where we are. But thanks for watching again and we'll see you next time. Why not head over and check out our new website? www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group The Crafty Blinder Van Builds Thanks for watching